wa Israeli katondo weje we mtukovu weka na fetu gamba ati uli mtukovu wata juru kuka Motukovo, motukovo, motukovo. We katonda owamani. Iyali ali ngerali ba. Motukovo. Gwe katondo wa manyi Manyi go tega nyonyo rani misabatu Ishiti wacho woyaliri twa mayinja gomu wendo Asinde falio Krista yo bibi kidwa mu masogo motukovu gwe katondo wa manyi motukovu 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 gwe katonda wa wa Oh, oh, oh. 
something that I found of late well, Jesus, that is very saddening we don't read the word of God so how will we know the voice of our father when we don't read his word we claim to have the word on the Bible I mean, sorry on the phone but it would be good if you're reading the word, you put it probably in airplane mode. If you choose to do that, because many times we have a lot of distraction from social media and all that. So we, inter- we don't hear God. It's my prayer that the Lord will take us back to that place of hungering and thirsting for his word. Okay, let's Let's read his word and we will pray. Uh, we're going to read from Luke uh, uh, chapter 15, chapter 15 verse 11 to 32. It seems a bit of a long read if it can be projected. Uh, New King James. Do you have New King James? You can do that for us. Oh, sorry, it's Uganda. You read eh? in Uganda. Hmm? Yes, please. Look. Luka, kumineta, 15, 11 to 32. Kwa yore kumine ulumu Na agamba anti, wali omuntu e alina batawani beba bili. Omuto na agamba chitawe iti, chitani. Mpomu kabo kwebi, mpomu kabo kwebi, tuye mkumuani iti. Kale na agavira, kale na wakavira, ebiyo gula mbwe. Awo lufanyuma, lufanyuma rena kusinji inji. Oyo mwana omuto na akunganyi vivyo na na atambula na agena mwuse ye wala na asasanyize yo evi tuye mwopisi mbi awe ya malo ukubiri ya vyo na injera nyingi na yu kwa mwusi omu na atanula oku, na atanula okutaga na ureku minitano na agenda na ye gata no mwami uo mwuse yu Oyo na msindi kama chalo, ichio kulunda anga mbizi. Nye gomba anga, nye gomba anga, ukukuta, ukukuta, ukukuta vya mbizi. Nye gomba anga, ukukuta, ukukuta mbizi vya zari anga. Nye wataba omu ntu amuwa, na ye wa yadamu, na aga amati. Awa weleza wa meka, awa weleza chitake. Aba kuta emmeri nebali mwa na ange mfira wani njala na akolokoka na akolokoka nengina eri chitangi nemuga ama ati chitangi yono onye eri guru nemu masoko sichi asana kuiti wa mwana o mfula angomu kwa weleza kwa weleza avu kwa weleza avu aba avi mpira Na guloka na chiri chitawe Na ye ya ringa achari wala Chitawe na amule ingira Na amu sasira Na tuka na ambilo Na amu kwa mchifuba Na amu nyue gira nyo Oyo mwana na amu kama ati chitange Yono nye ele kuru ni muma asoko Sicha asana kuiti kwa mwana uo Na ye chitawe na agamba abatu venti Mugende mule itema angu oluko yoru singa zona Murua Mulu muambazi, mumu nani ke mpita kungalo, nenga tomu vikirevi, mulete enyana eya safa, mujite, tujirie, tusanyuke, 
kubanga omwana wange ono yali afudde azukidde yali azaye azawuse nibatandiko kusanyuka na ye omwana omkulu yali mchalo bwe yajja nga nganatera okutuka ku nyumba na ulira engoma na mazina kubaddu na itako omu na mubuza e na mbuze bibwe bibadde na mugamba ati muganda waze nekitawo amutide enyane ya sava kubanga azaudi kubanga amza amzaudi nga mulamu amzu ne amzaudi nga mulamu rabi mu munana na ye na sunguwala na tayagala kuingira kitawe na afuruma na mwegairira na ye ye na damu na gama ati na gamba kitawe nti laba emyaka kino minji nga kuweleza so sikusobyanga na katono chok chonda kidde nange enaku zonna tompanga na kabuzi ka kusanyuka na, na mikwano jange na yo mwana oyo na yo mwana oyo e yaliya ebyobulamu ebyobulamu bwo ebyobulamu bwo na yo mwana oyo e yaliya ebyobulamu bwo muna abenzi kwaze ngo ngo mutira enyana e yasava yena amugamba ati mwana wange gwe buli jongo oliwa oliwa muna ange era byo ne byange bye bibyo na ye o okujaguza nokusanyuka siku ansonga kubanga muganda woyo yali afudde azukidde era yali azaye azawusi amen let's pray father Sabe. we thank you for your word that we was over each gambo jo and we thank you for your love for us that we was over kwagala ko jetuli and today we open our hearts to you leo tukule mitima ya fejori that you would speak to us father oyo gena fetata do that i pray o kama asaba that your word you you cause our, our minds to be open ole tinde wozo za fokugula as well as our hearts that you will water your word of kirech gambo jo that we will receive it tujifone and it will wash our lives and it will transform us lord come and have your way in our midst kama changu ile masikati gafe in jesus name we pray muri nyale yesu mutusabiti amen amen yeah just before we go on with the word with the sharing i want to thank each of you for encouraging us and standing with us yes we're going through a hard time as a family yes my stepfather our dad tata wa fe had had left many years back but god brought him back to us and so he was living with mom in katale seguku where my elder sis built them a house mukuru wa fujeria bazimbire nyumba yes and um, but i want to thank god that his last days jako basa mukamati nakuze he's been showing so much love he's received so much love twafuno kwagala kunji nyo kuva jali children the step children the different children abasukuru na abana abinjo wa able to come and show him love basulo kujerewa mlako kwa most importantly he gave his life to the lord next thing okuru na lokoka and he kept asking for give for forgive from anyone that he wrong so the sadness is because we were just enjoying that sweet moment for a short time it was very sweet just about two months and then my big sister traveled back on wednesday to los angeles and we escorted with him we to the airport and um, as she was arriving in the us he dies here in uganda so she's on the flight back she'll be back tonight and we have a vigil we still have a lot to do and we'll bury him on Wednesday yes but today I just remembered something that I learned from Pastor Laban he had lost I think it was his mother was it 
and he was he had ministry to do he continued with it and still went and buried and so i believe that the lord will use me for what he purposes today because he he ordained today yes. but i thank you and i i request that you continue to uphold the family especially my sister who is on her own on the plane we are a bit worried about her but we trust that it shall be well yes that's what i wanted to share for those who may be wondering we know the messages and we are seeing you here yes. okay but what is on my heart that the lord has been putting on my heart is this from this reading Some of us may wonder why are we reading a, a, a big chunk. I think I shared in some of the uh, like one of the Wednesdays or two of them that mm. it's important for us to read the full meal. Many times we want a few verses that work for us. But we miss out on the whole context of what the Lord wants for us. And that's what I liken sometimes to eating brown rice. We say pilao, but there is no meat. Tugama <laughs> We only pick out a bit. and then we don't do what God wants us to do. So I would encourage us even in your your, your own time. Read the whole chapter. So you will get the full context of what the Lord wants you to hear. Okay, I call I titled it Recognizing and Embracing the Father Heart of God. If you are writing it's recognizing and embracing the father heart of god our father has is a father but many times we forget that and we see the lord jesus here sharing this parable and he's showing us the heart of god the father So that title is recognizing Okuzula. and embracing the father heart of God. No kunyegira omutima kwa tata. I pray by the end of these few minutes. You will be able to recognize and embrace the father heart of God. Ojakuzula eyo nyegire omutima kwa tata ogwa katonda. And that you will you will allow him to take you where he wants you to go. Eromo kiriza kutwali onache yagala ko kinde. As I'm, uh, I'd like to pose a question to us. I may pose a few questions. Does the prodigal son remind you of yourself? I'll say it again. Does the prodigal son remind you of yourself? Or maybe, or maybe many times we just read the word and it's like a nice story. It's actually abstract. Or oh, oh, it's far. We, we, we think that it does not apply to us. It was just for those days. For that prodigal son. I'm here to tell us that many times we are that prodigal son. Believe it or not, many times we are that prodigal son in many ways. We do what he did many times over. over and over you will ask me how we spend on the goodness that god has given us we spend we use and lose out on our relationship with god this prodigal son if i can bring him to our context today many are parents here If your son asks you for an inheritance when you are still alive let us be honest I'd like to hear from just three three people what would you do for that son what would be your answer if your son your son Emma comes and asks you daddy I want my inheritance now please tell us what would you tell him hmm? 
<laughs> you would advise him to wait? Yes, Uncle Asa? Hmm. Mm. Okay, one more person. This time can I hear from a mother? Oh, okay, Mr. Chizicho. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one more person, a mother. Yes, my Mama. dear. Okay, you first understand his mind. But I, I also want us to be honest. I would be shocked. Personally, I would be shocked. I would be scared. I would think I'm not safe. Because this child wants their inheritance while you're still alive. Might they do something to get you out of the way to get their inheritance? I want you to think about it that way. But look at this father. The child asked for the inheritance. That is a child to be scared of or worried about. But he gave it to him. And the, the boy went and spoke it lavishly. And you know money you've not worked for, eh? You can really waste it. Because you don't know the pain. But he, he came back eventually, as we see in the world. He came back to the father. And was he received? He was received. I'll pose it to us again. You have this son, you've given the inheritance. And he has gone. I've seen uh, many people have uh, sold their land and they've come to Kampala. They've done a number of things and some have gone to Abu Dhabi. Everything is gone. They've given away all the family what? And they come back home with nothing. Usually they are not very well welcomed. And let's be honest. If this child came back, you are not going to treat them the same way, are you? If you are honest with yourself. But the Bible tells us this one was received in an amazing way. Really, if, if this is the standard God wants for me, the, the standard it's a, a tall order it's hard uh, I'd find it very hard to do but the Lord requires this to, to have those, those hearts I want us to see the heart of God the Father towards us. He has given you grace. You, you and I. Many times we come to him, we give our lives to the Lord. We fast, we pray, we wait on him. Hey, we are very humble. We will clean all the, the church chairs. We will, we will do all those things. And then he raises us. And you become somebody in God's. Now in our in, in your offices. And money begins to come in. Many times, some of those are the things that, the blessings that take us again away from God. Now with that favor he's given you, and you're making a lot, maybe you're now in the finance office, you start making deals making deals, you start doing in jaulo. Hmm? Am I speaking to someone? 
Enjaulo tuzikuba you will not agree but they are there. Oyinzo kutakiriza ne chesiri. And that enjaulo you get enough you buy a plot. Enjaulo yongo mazo jikuba no funachiwa no plot. No kula mataka ku plot. No many plots and many things that you do. You're riding on the grace of God. For some of the ministers, God has raised and given you such a favor and a grace. And you abuse it. It's not uncommon today to hear what's happening in the church. Some things that are found in us, the servants and ministers of God, are despicable. You know we can fool everybody, but you can never fool God. You can put on a church face. You can put on a church dress. You can put on a church shoe. Even we know the church language. Praise the Lord. Yeah. God is good all the time and that's his nature. Wow. We know it all. But in that quiet place where the Lord is watching you, are you, living, are you that same person or you're living a double life? Are you abusing the grace of God? Man of God, are you sleeping around with the girls in the church? They may not be in the church because you think in the church everyone knows you. But outside there, are you sleeping around? Are you making telling lies to make money? What are you doing out there? Today the Lord is calling us back as a father to return. Young lady out there. What do you do where we are not? After you have been in the overnight. Hey, where are you on the weekends? Weekend, you know that these days there are some things you just look at certain posts on WhatsApp and it will make you wonder. I don't need to say much. You know what I mean. The Lord is calling us back. Have you abused his grace? My encouragement is don't feel like you know you, you have messed up too much. And I'm also not telling you to go ahead and mess up. But what the Father is speaking us today to return to return to the Father because he's got a father heart. I want you to imagine as a parent, if your child maybe, uh, say you discipline them in the morning, and then lunchtime you don't see them, then it comes to 7 p.m. you're not seeing them, are you not likely to fail to eat supper or dinner and go and look for them? And call the neighbors. And go to the friends. And if you don't see that child that night, tell me the truth. Will you sleep? You will need to you will only sleep when your child is back home, isn't it? So we are bringing pain to the heart of God the Father. He's calling us to come back. What are those things that have made us prodigal? Sons and daughters. Can we come back? We know those things. What are those sins that so easily entangle us? Sometimes we have behaved like the hired servant. You know, here, where it says in verse 17, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare and I perish with, with the hunger? But maybe before that, I'll just say, he, he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. Yeah, so yeah, that's 15. 
and he sent him into the fields to feed the swine we have joined ourselves to certain citizens we don't know which citizen is being talked about but this was a place far away from home remember now let us see that home is in the kingdom of God so we the prodigal sons we go and join ourselves to certain citizens of another country I'll call this the world and many times actually these citizens who may even be our bosses will send you to feed the swines ask yourself how aren't there are certain jobs some of us are doing that do not glorify God and when you speak to the brother or sister they will say I'm waiting upon the Lord is not answering what do you want me to do the other day sister was telling me that Munang for me I'm going to go with the Hajis because these Christian brothers in the church this brother in, the, in church they have nothing good it really about broke my heart he she even showed me the picture of the Hajji she is a sister who is fire spitting and she loves the Lord may the Lord help us to return you will find sisters some people are actually working in bars there are I know believers who are working in casinos they're betting places you know some of those places are difficult places to be you will say I'm going to be in this place I will not drink I will not do all this ah, but I want us to imagine someone who is standing and one who is down there yeah, someone the is standing on a chair you are standing on a chair and someone is down there and, and they, they keep pulling, down. pulling you down who is likely to come down the one who is on the chair pulling you up or the one who is up. Who do we think will come down? Isn't it the one who is high up there? So we have joined ourselves to the citizens of the country. Remember, we are not supposed to unequally yoke ourselves. Many times we think it only has to do with uh, uh, relationships in terms of husbands getting a husband right? but I see that this man imagine a son of a wealthy man the way we read this scripture you can see that this man was a wealthy man but his son was, he joined himself to the citizen of that country and he was feeding the swine even the way the word swine it just sounds terrible and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate and no one gave him anything from that point I want to encourage you and encourage myself as well if it is a job or a certain situation that you are in that you know does, that does, does not glorify God it is time you turn back to God he's more than able to place you where you ought to be and to, to treat you as a son and as a daughter not as a, 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 a hired servant I want to ask a question how does a hired servant behave I just want a, a quick difference can you have people tell us what, how does a hired servant behave a hired, a hired servant yeah. the one who is paid to serve oh yes asura okubanga akola in a home okay let's put it in a setting of a home a hired servant in a home and a, and a son oh, what are some few differences because uh, uh, 
Sumba edi achoge de. Nchomu tima ago te gube edaho. Ako leda sente. You know? Do we know that even in the church, we have become hired servants? Tumaisi ni mokanisa tofu seva duwa wakozi. Yes. And I say that again. Do we know that even in the church, we have become hired servants? Tumaisi ni mokanisa tofu seva kozi ya bandi ya ukusasua. We have forgotten we are children of God. We are sons and daughters of God called to serve God. The Lord is calling us back. To come to that place. The Father is filled with compassion. You might be there saying, He says, Mesuka, you don't know what I have done. You don't know the kind of mess I have had to do at work. You don't know the bosses I've had to sleep with to get to where I am. I don't know. It's true, I don't know. But God knows. And he's still a compassionate father. And he says a contrite and humble heart he will not despise. He says that in Psalms 51.17 if you will take note of it and maybe read it. Psalm 51, 17. A contrite and humble heart you will not despise. I want to remind us something. That sin will undress us of our robes. Sin, sin. HV. Chitwambula. Chitwambula. Yes. HV chitwambula. Those things that we do there that no one sees. You might be dressed like this. But you're actually undressed. The Lord has given you, you know, garments of, of praise, garments of, you know, of his beauty, garments of his splendor, and sin will remove them, of grace, of favor, and sin will remove them. We can see it even in this, this sun. When, when the father said in, in verse 22, bring out the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his hands and sandals on his feet. He did not look like that son anymore. In fact, he could not be recognized. But because this is his father, he received him and gave him new robes. Isn't that such a loving father? Yes, Yes, you know because come back to the Lord. He will clothe you again. And we see our father. He even clothed, you remember Adam? And the, and the wife Eve in the garden. Even when Suku. they sinned, they did not go out of the garden naked. God still made clothing for them. The, the animal skin and covered them. Na that is our God. You are in a shameful situation. Maybe you're, you're involved in adultery. Because you're involved in something that you know is not right. And if, if, if it was put on the word, it would, be, it would bring you a lot of shame. But come back to the, the father heart of God. He will clothe you and Aja, he will preserve you. And protect you from that shame that you would have if you continue in that situation. You know, believers, we don't like this kind of njiri. But that's the reality. You might say, my sins are small. I am just a little envious. My friend, that's, that sin is rebellion. And rebellion is as a sin of 
witchcraft. And imagine the Bible relates rebellion to witchcraft. So you may say, I've never been to a shrine. But you are as good as a witch. Can you imagine? Isn't that scary? I want to say that the father rejoices over us when we return to him. Not just for one to receive. Uh, I know we, we usually relate this scripture to when one gives their lives to the Lord. But it's also somebody who has walked away from God and you have returned. I want to ask us uh, towards the end, do you have an older son syndrome? Do you have an older son syndrome as you serve God? Do you have jealousy, envy when God blesses his people? Do you have envy and jealousy? I hear people saying, I know kasaja kumutima. Do we understand that? Especially those you deemed backslidden. God is calling us back. You see here, this son was very angry. And many times we are also like this son. And, and uh, here the Bible tells us he was angry, he could not go in. And his father pleaded with him. And Father God is pleading with us. Let us not waste time to judge people. And let us serve God and return to God. You might be saying, I've served God all these years. But why is God blessing so and so and not me? My dear, God sees these hearts. One might come to you and share their testimony of what God is doing. And you feel a certain sense of sadness in you. Because God has seemingly taken long without answering your prayer. I want to encourage you, my brother, my sister, return to the Father heart of God. Yours is coming. What is yours is coming. And as I told you, it doesn't come in duplicates, not but it comes original. When it is for you, like the Lord meant it for you. I was sharing uh, recently, I think in, in one of uh, Wednesday services, about godliness and contentment being great gain. That you can take note of it and read it, 1 Timothy chapter 6. I remember sharing it and some people coming and, and telling me, we wish this could be shared in the, in the, whole, in the Sunday service. But you can read it for yourself, 1 Timothy. Chapter 6. Read through and may the Lord speak to us about contentment and godliness. We are, we are godly as Christians, but we lack contentment. And then that's why we end up having envy and jealousy. And this does not please God. It doesn't at all. And so I see ourselves many times in church in this situation. You see somebody, maybe they've fallen short of the glory of God. And we all do because the Bible tells us they've fallen short of the glory of God. But you see, we always magnify those sins that, that are able to be seen by people. Say you see a sister is now pregnant. So that brother impregnated that sister. And we keep and we even give them that's the new name. When they are passing, you can even use your mouth or eyes to show your Those are the ones. You have a lot of jealousy. Go in oh, bitter, Go in bitterness. You also have bitterness. 
But you stand and serve God in that bitterness. God is such a compassionate God that he has not struck us dead. He has been merciful. And he's given us time. At what day we say My prayer is that you will search your heart. Okay, but it is not everything that you are going to have. Don't go and visit somebody's house and then decide to go and change your house because the other one's house looks like this. You are not, not going to manage. Are you are not going to manage. Let us be content and happy with what God is doing in our lives. But also let us rejoice when God brings back our brethren to earth. And let us love them. In our midst, that's why the church is really being disintegrated. One of the reasons. Because we don't, we don't show grace, we don't show love. And so people who have, have faltered, will go away. But yet here, the Bible tells us this son was received. I love what the Bible says. And he said to him, your brother has come. We, he has received him safe and sound. Your father has killed the patent cow. He was angry. He would not go in. Okay, that was the brother. And he said, uh, he said about the many years he served. But the, the, the father said, you are always with me. So your blessing is, all, is already there. I'm saying that your blessing of serving God is already there. I think I was also sharing about the Beatitudes sometime. The, the scriptures speak about the Beatitudes. Blessed, you are, um, you are blessed. Pastor Eddie, would you paraphrase? Mm-hmm. Some of the things that we don't know for yeah, blessing, I would encourage us to read Matthew 5. My dear, you will realize you are blessed. You don't have to have a Lamborghini to be blessed. You don't have to have your child in, say, Aga Khan to know that you are blessed. If they are there well and good, it's okay. You are blessed. May the Lord help us to remove anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, envy, jealousy. All manner of wickedness from our hearts. Especially when we see God lift people. I see that is one of the problems we really have in the church. It is so sad in Timukanisa to do our Can you imagine? It is sad. I have seen it because I've worked in some Christian organizations and I've seen it and it's shocking. But let that be far from us. So that the Lord will dwell richly in us. That we'll experience that Father heart of God. I may not have spoken about that thing, but you know it. What is that thing that has made you a prodigal son? What is that that has taken away that sweet fellowship with God? You know when you're walking in sin, as I said, you can fool everybody. But by the way, you cannot fool God. And so you can, even your morning devotion, you may not be able to do it. Even your prayer time, because you remember how Adam was hiding and God was asking, where are you? I am naked. You know sin, I said, derobs us. But the Lord today, what I feel on that, on, in my, the Lord has impressed upon my heart. I just sense the hands of God open. He wants to receive his people back. Even when the Lord was giving me this message, I was like, God, isn't this supposed to be for non-believers? But it was coming to me that it's in that church my people have gone away. My people are so far away from me. You know, we give God lip service. But our hearts are far. 
even as we are we are serving in those different jobs there is no god in us nothing at all that shows god in us even your workmates wonder if you're born again One of the times when I was working at Church of Uganda, one of the drivers spoke to me and said, if, if that reverend is, is also going to heaven, and I'd rather not go to heaven. I don't need to get saved. This particular driver, uh, uh, they had given me the car to use it for uh, something to pick my daughter. So, so I had was putting fuel. And then he asked me, uh, uh, let's get a, re- a, a receipt and and then I said I don't personally need a receipt. <laughs> Maybe to show the receipt office that I have put fuel. But he, he wanted to put even a different amount. <laughs> and I told him why. I said Reverend needs it. We have to balance. I was like, what? is the way we are moving. And this man said he will never get saved. See the testimony. May God help us. Lord. That's what I'm saying that here it's very easy to look very holy, righteous. But we ought to serve God everywhere. We we to represent him everywhere. You are working with a workmate and they come to tell you they have had a promotion. celebrate them. Serve them. Even if now they have become your boss. The Lord will bless you as you serve. Faithfully. As, as a child, not a hired servant. We go to work as Christians. And when you get there, you are using, I don't know what is this people do these days to watch movies as you're working. Solitaire. You're not good stewards at work. And then you are the one complaining you're not promoted. You, you may be at an, um, a, a shop and they've given you things to sell. Then you buy your own things and first sell those ones before the ones of your boss. You are making injaulos. And you know those wrong injaulos I'm talking about. We are not glorifying God. We have agreed we have been those prodigal sons. But can we come back to the father heart of God? Because he desires us back. And heaven rejoices when we return. God's expectation of us even as we are out there to show unconditional love that Christ showed for us and emulate it even as fathers here, fathers and mothers even in the church as leaders it is a call for us when people fall from the grace of God that we restore them with love and we don't label them. I don't see this son labeled. Okay, this was to teach us, but the father does not label him. He receives him back. He, he, he gives him new robes. His identity is he's brought back as a child. There's one more thing I'll say that always touched me about the disciple. That the disciple. Imagine the Lord knew that he would be the one who would, who would lead the rest. And so even when he denied him, he asked him again, do you love me? Do you love me? And he entrusted him with the rest. How many of us would do that? After somebody has failed, would you trust them again? May God give us the grace to have that heart towards everybody. 
I also speak to the wives mothers at home. These ladies we have at home. We have have children. Children. Treat them well. I know this could be like the girl who helped Naman. You know there are so many things that we do that are not right that are hidden. You you might be very very good good in other areas, but you mistreat your worker. You might be very good in all these other areas. But you're mistreating your workers. They don't see the love of God in you. They don't see God. And they are not drawn to the Lord. I have something that I ask God to help me. Any girl who comes through my hands in my womb must be transformed and changed. I see them as a ministry. I go beyond. I go beyond and when you meet them, mommy, they are just like family. And they grow to other levels. These girls should not just work and slave for you. They should experience the love of God. They should go out and be a blessing to others. That is to the mothers and the fathers. Don't look at these girls and make them her guys. Yes, it's even in the church. The men are sleeping with the house helps. It's an abomination. Or I would say that to us in the church. But it is happening and you know it. Even if you haven't done it but the desire is coming up. Go at the feet of God the Father. He will help you. Not only those, even your sisters in law. Never, never, The men I'm speaking to you now. This one who come to help you a bit when your wife has given birth. May the Lord help us. There are so many things that can make us prodigal. I pray that the Lord will search our heart. And and that we will return to him. He is loving. He is a compassionate father. And what I say that says on my heart is that his hands, his arms are wide open. He wants to receive us back. He deserves that sweet fellowship that he has with you. That we like to call the first love.